Welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Natasha Kirchuk, and coming up in today's newscast, the Israeli government is instituting drastic measures as more than 100 Israelis are now diagnosed with the coronavirus. Will a new Israeli-developed vaccine for the disease soon be available? And stay tuned to find out which major Hollywood actress is set to star in an Israeli series. Well, it's official. The World Health Organization has now declared the coronavirus outbreak a pandemic in a move that's pushing many nations to take stronger action against protecting the public. Now, 100 Israelis have been diagnosed with coronavirus in the state of Israel, and 91 of them are in the hospital. Only three have already recovered from the disease. Well, the latest uptick of cases in Israel comes after the Israeli health ministry has just ruled out new restrictions to stop the spread of the virus. Public gatherings in Israel are now no longer allowed to have more than 100 people, which means as of now, Israelis are banned from going to most weddings and synagogue prayers. Schools are staying open for now, but universities should prepare for distance learning ahead of their possible closure. And anybody who has a fever or respiratory symptoms of any kind must now enter home quarantine until 48 hours after those symptoms have disappeared. The defense ministry has also announced that it will be extending closures of entry into Israel from the Gaza Strip and the West Bank city of Bethlehem in a bid to contain the virus. And hundreds of thousands of Israelis are currently in home quarantine, especially following the latest government order that every single person who's returned to Israel from abroad must enter 14 days of home quarantine. But when will this saga end? Well, it doesn't seem to be anytime soon. Israeli Culture Minister Miri Regev has now announced that for the first time in Israeli history, Israel's Independence Day torch lighting ceremony will be held without spectators. That's on April 28th, almost a month and a half away. Now, as more and more restrictions are placed on the public amid the coronavirus outbreak, the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange has plummeted by more than 8 percent. And the Israeli government has now announced plans to supply just over $2.8 billion in so-called emergency first aid to the Israeli economy. These funds will be used as either loans to businesses or a cash injection to the health care system and other necessary services to the public. An estimated $1.13 billion of government money will be offered to Israeli businesses in the form of low-interest loans. About $280 million will be used to strengthen the health care system, and another $280 million will be used to bolster services like the Israeli police, fire and rescue services, and the prison services. Financial support is also going to be provided separately for the struggling aviation industry, which includes flagship Israeli airlines like El Al, Israel, and Al Kia. As of now, El Al has announced plans to place a whopping 80% of its 6,300 employees on unpaid leave, as the company expects to lose up to $160 million by April. Businesses applying for loans should be able to receive assistance from within seven to nine days. The Israeli finance minister says there also may be additional steps taken to strengthen the National Insurance Institute, which is tasked with helping the elderly and the growing number of workers that are being laid off. Israel's services exports are expected to see losses of $535 million, and exports of goods are expected to see losses of $366 million. Luckily, government officials are relatively unconcerned about shortages in food and raw materials since most imports to Israel arrive by sea, and Israel is well-placed to be able to feed its population with local produce. Well, joining us now in the studio to further discuss the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on the Israeli economy is Mark Schulman, columnist for Newsweek and the editor of HistoryCentral.com. All right, so the prime minister and the finance minister announced yesterday that, you know, they're going to be adding another budget to help the Israeli health care system and also uh, businesses that are dealing with this crisis. But what is your take on this response? Is injecting money into the system truly the answer? Well, it's going to have to be part of the answer. They're going to have to do much, much more than that. I mean, they should be doing things like uh, freezing uh, income tax payments, freezing bank loans, all sorts of terrible th things that happen right now they could try to do immediately. Second of all, they're going to need to borrow an awful lot of money. We're talking about billions and billions of dollars. It's going to take that to restart the economy. 
when the time comes, and right. something's going to have to bridge us from here to there. Because people don't realize the economy is going to come, is already coming screeching to a halt. Whole sectors have stopped. I mean, you talk about, you know, LL is one example. They just, today they announced 200 hotels are closing. Right. And that's only a small fraction. And then everyone related to that, every tour guide, everything. 200 hotels closing? What do you mean? Well, As in because the Ministry of Health has insisted that they closed because someone came through there Got who it. had the virus. Okay. Not to mention so the that's something that I just learned right, right now. Not to mention the fact that they don't have any guests, which is also a little bit of a problem. Who would go to a hotel right now, quite honestly? Yeah, so that's, that's fair. The, so, so, so the reality is all of these industries, and at some point, there's no doubt they're going to have to close schools. That means all the children are going to be home. Uh, people aren't going to be able to yeah, go to Yeah, I mean, what is your take on the fact that they're not closing schools yet, whereas, you know, in universities, they're saying, okay, prepare for distance learning uh, because, you know, you're most likely going to have to, to just close down completely. I have to believe they're going to close schools any moment now. The reality is they should have done it yesterday. If Denmark and Sweden and all the Ireland and all those places have closed schools, they certainly should. In the United States, my grandson has not been to school uh, now for a week, he lives in New Rochelle, New York. Is he and celebrating? How's he feeling about that? He's four years that? old. He's getting a little bit, you know, getting stuck in the house, being in quarantine when you're four is a little bit difficult, to say the least. Yeah. Um, but um, the reality is, look, it's much worse than we think, I'm afraid, both from an economic and from a health standpoint. First of all, they should be testing everybody, certainly who has any sort of respiratory issues. In South Korea, they're testing everybody who's right. in the region. They're testing 10,000 people a day. I think we're testing something there of 30 or 40 a day. Now, we, now, theoretically, the ministry doesn't have the capacity, but the private health uh, groups have it. Plus, we have, we have one of the best biotech industries in the world. You should, we, we, Prime Minister Netanyahu should be getting together with the heads of all the biotech companies in the country and say, OK, what can you do? What can you do? What can you do? How can you divide up the responsibility so we can test everybody? Right. I mean, these are sort of things that we have the capability of doing, but we're not doing it. Look, they just said yesterday they ordered, um, ordered drugs for this. Now, very nice to order drugs yesterday. Do they think anyone in the world has supplies available now? I mean, they should have been ordering those drugs three weeks ago and not yesterday. Well, it's interesting as well because there's this vaccine that the health ministry has been speaking about that has been in development, and they say that it could, uh, you know, testing is going to be taking place in the next couple of weeks, but realistically, because of bureaucratic issues, it's not going to be ready for the public for much longer. So Okay, I don't believe bureaucratic issues are going to stand in the way. In the, in right, the, you know, right. That's, that's the reality. If we have a, t if we have a vaccine that actually works... I, at, least in, at least in Israel, yeah. we'll find a way to distribute it. But I do think you need to test it for a little bit of time because yeah. we've had examples in history uh, for, um, in terms of people who've been paralyzed and other things yeah. because of bad vaccines. So we have to yeah. be very careful about that as well. Now, I'd like to also speak about the United States because you know the countries like China and South Korea have really been at the forefront of dealing with this crisis. Uh, but the U.S. seemed to kind of not be doing much um, until... Yesterday, um, Trump, you know, announced the closure of borders uh, for European flights. Why now? Why has it taken so long? Well, because he doesn't didn't want any of this to happen. Because all he wanted to do is assume the stock market was going to keep on going up and up and up, and this sort of upset his plans, shall we say? He didn't realize what he needed to be done to take charge. The CDC in America is run by an ideologue, so he followed the cues from the president. It's not run by an independent scientist at this point. The fact of the matter is that they don't have testing going on is absurd. We have as much testing as they have going on. And this is a country you know, 100 times as large. The fact of the matter is America should be testing, testing, testing. Now, people are starting to step in. Um, Bill Gates has de developed, is developing something for everyone in mm -hmm. Seattle to be tested. Um, Zuckerberg has bought some very expensive equipment so that in the Bay Area everyone can be tested. But the government has not been doing that. It hasn't yeah. been moving quick enough. And closing air flights to Europe at this point is like closing you know, the barn door long after the horses have left because they're all in America. The, you know, the, the situation in America is much, much worse than we think. So my final question for you, and, and I just want a quick response because unfortunately we have to move on, is how long do you think this is going to last? What about all the people who have Passover uh, vacations scheduled? Is there any hope for them? And let's talk about Rosh Hashanah because Passover is long dead. This is nothing is going to happen okay. in Passover. We don't know, but let's, we can hope that by the time Rosh Hashanah comes, this will have passed us. We just don't know. There's so many things we don't know that's the most scary part of this. Well, Shoshana is in September for September, September. right? For those of, of our viewers who are watching and wondering what that means. But, Mark, thank you for coming in. You're going to be with us again later as we talk about the political situation here in Israel. Uh, but moving on, as panic surrounding the coronavirus continues to rise, we're seeing thousands of Israelis head to supermarkets in a rush to stock up on food and, of course, non-perishables. But 
What about the people who don't have the funds to do that? Well, the Israeli organization Leket helps feed Israel's neediest by collecting and distributing produce and food that would otherwise be thrown away. But their organization is now facing a major crisis, a lack of volunteers to help hand out that food. And joining us in the studio is founder and chairman of Leket Israel, Joseph Gittler. All right, so... Hi. Hi, I know. This is this different is, than our normal get together. This right? is definitely different. Of course, we've you know covered your organization several times. Absolutely amazing what you do. How has the fear of the coronavirus impacted your organization right now? Well, it's a maelstrom, I would say, and fast changing, as Mark was speaking about. Great unknowns. The 200 hotels that Mark spoke about, many of them are where Leket gets one of its major sources of food. Hotels, right. food corporations. That food that they would normally cook, and they're always excess, but when there's no hotels open, no corporate cafeterias open, there's no food for Leket to collect, and of course the people we're bringing that food to are the people most in need in general, and certainly at this time. Wow, so we're talking about two very different issues here. One is actually the lack of food that you're now you know, encountering from these bigger businesses, but what about Actual, actually picking up food from you know farms that would otherwise throw that fresh produce away. Are you able to do that? Is that being impacted? So generally, Leckett has about a thousand volunteers a week in our various operations. We've ca we've canceled and some have canceled on their own. Mm -hmm. All volunteer groups through the end of Passover. There's no, we really have no other decision we could take. It was very hard for us right. to do that. I sat today with our senior staff to talk about. What's going to be, you know, our plan as of now is we may have to go and try to raise extra funds, hire temporary workers. We're discussing, we're generally a food rescue organization. We don't buy food. Right. The last time we no, bought food. No, you're picking it up and you're right, distributing and it. And getting it for free. And the last time we purchased food was in the summer of 2014 during the fighting in Israel when, again, in the South, businesses were closed, restaurants were closed, bars were closed, and we bought food to take care of the population in the South. Those are the kind of things we're discussing internally now at Leket, and I expect by Monday, seeing what the situation is, we're going to have a plan in place, and we may go to the general public and say, help us, help those right. in need. And I'm most concerned, of course, about the elderly, who many of whom, rightly so, are staying home by choice. The government may, may not order them to stay home, right. but may recommend it strongly. And there are a lot of elderly that we serve in centers, in day centers, in government housing, that we as an organization are going to need to figure out how to feed them. So it's really, yeah. this is unprecedented. Many Holocaust survivors as well. Sure. It's unprecedented situation for everyone in the world. And certainly, we're not the only charity. Every charity um, that works in this country needs to be thinking about uh, contingency planning, which sadly, we could do all the work to plan for today. And by Monday, things could change drastically. But does the government consider the work that you're doing one of those essential services? Because they are injecting money into, you know, the healthcare system and, uh, and the police force. What about organizations like yours? I would, perhaps. I think it's yeah. probably now those kind of discussions will start. I think, though, as we know, these are times where the government's going to lean on charities, private charities, right. to just do what they can. And generally, private charities have been pretty good when needed in raising money in emergencies. There is an emergency council of charities, yeah. which we're part of. So, and governments are wary because of bureaucracy. Yeah. Again, Mark spoke about bureaucracy. These are not times for bureaucracy, but governments don't usually pour millions of dollars yeah. in moments notice. Well, well how many people uh, is Leket feeding? So Leket helps feed about 175,000 people every week. Right. We generally serve about eight to 10,000 hot meals a day. I know those numbers are already down 25%. I have no doubt by next week those numbers are going to be down more. When it comes to fruit and vegetables, we actually expect the numbers to remain steady, right. if not grow, but not if we don't have the ability to, to collect them. Well, that's what's so interesting is because when you're looking at a lot of reports are saying Israel's actually, in terms of having enough food, the country can produce enough you know, agricultural products for the public, so that's fine. But then the whole distribution process is a whole other animal and is one of the largest reasons that, you know, so many people don't have access to that food, which is what Leket does. Sure. And now we're, we're just seeing a completely different issue. And then you add on top of that the fact that, you know, we're lucky, you and I, that we can kind of go to the supermarket and buy whatever it is that we want, but what about these people 
um, who don't have that ability and are depending on you. It's very scary. So my final question, if you could just quickly tell us, because we're running out of time here, is for any of our viewers who want to help you, what can they do? Well, please come to our website, www.leket.org. Certainly, I think we're going to need a lot of increased funds, as I expect we're going to be purchasing food, which is not our normal course of business. We, don't, we want to keep all our employees yeah. on, paying them like a responsible charity should do. And I think people should also sign up on our volunteer site in case we need emergency volunteers delivering food house to house, which is not something we normally do. And of course, it's much more labor intensive right. than we normally need. All right. Well, I, I, I would like to volunteer. So there we go. Our first volunteer. We're going to talk about that afterwards. Thank you Thank so you. much for joining us, Joseph. Thank you. All right. Now, as panic spreads amid the coronavirus outbreak, there is some hope coming out of Israel. And ILTV's Nittany Manson has the details. As panic spreads amidst the coronavirus outbreak, there is some hope coming out of Israel. Is a vaccine for coronavirus just around the corner? That could be the case in Israel, where a vaccine for the virus is on track to be ready for testing within just a few weeks, although it likely won't be available for months because of lengthy bureaucratic testing and approval. The oral vaccine for adults and children could turn the disease into a very mild cold. The state-funded Migal Galilee Research Institute has been working for the last four years towards developing a vaccine that could be customized for various viruses, and it's now being adapted to focus on corona. Israel's science ministry made headlines last month when they said a vaccine could be just three months away. But the health ministry doesn't want to spread false hope. The vaccine will consist of a specially produced protein that needs to go through clinical testing for at least 30 days and then human trials for another 30, before going through the process of government approval. A solution to the virus is in dire need, especially given the new results from a U.S. study. Findings by John Hopkins University say that most people infected with the coronavirus will show symptoms within five days, and almost everyone will be symptomatic by day 12. But the big issue is that the virus is contagious before the symptoms even appear, making it extremely difficult for authorities to contain the pathogen in time. Well, we have some breaking news right now. It turns out that Israeli schools are going to be shuttered until Passover. That has just been announced by the National Security Council. Um, Education and Health Ministry has held consultations, and they decided that that is the right move right now, similar to what is already taking place in uh, many schools um, across the world, in the United States, in Denmark, you name it. So uh, I guess kids have something to look forward to. A little bit more of a break. I don't know how parents are going to feel about that. Now, turning to the unstable political situation in Israel right now, the leader of the ultra-Orthodox Shas party, Ari Deri, has come out with an interesting statement. He's now calling on Prime Minister Netanyahu and blue and white Benny Gantz to overcome their differences and form a national emergency government as the coronavirus pandemic sends waves across the world. Deri has been adamant about only serving in a government led by Netanyahu, but he says that there's no way to deal with the coronavirus challenge but to come together and form a unity government. Derry says he will be making that recommendation to President Wolven Rivlin on Sunday when representatives of the eight parties in the new Knesset are set to meet. Derry is also criticizing blue and white leader Benny Gantz for continuing to seek a minority government and attempting to unseat current Knesset Speaker Yuli Edelstein, who they believe is using his power to protect Netanyahu in his current corruption cases. The blue and white party have faced setbacks in forming a minority government after three Knesset members from the center and left announced that they would oppose a coalition dependent on the Arab majority joint list. All right. Now, is the coronavirus pandemic going to force Israel's right and left wing parties into forming a unity government? That is the question. And back in the studio with some analysis is, of course, Mark Schulman. All right, Mark. So my Ouija board says, <laughs> yes, what does your Ouija board say? Are we is, is this going to happen? Is it going to happen? I don't know. I don't, I don't really see the scenario of how it really works out because we still have the same problems that existed before. I'm not sure that blue and white can go into a coalition and the, the bad, bad blood between Gantz and Netanyahu, mostly on the side of Gantz for what Netanyahu tried to do to him during the election. I think it'll be very hard to see him agree to sit in a government together with Netanyahu. Look, Israel needs a different government. It could even have a unity government. I mean, it needs someone in charge of the health ministry who has right. some background in health or someone who's in charge who has some organizational background. You know, I like to send Gabi Ashkenazi to the health ministry, make him minister of health right now to organize things and get things done really quickly. Well, it was just interesting because today we saw Netanyahu come, or 
in the, the last couple of days, he's been coming out with all these different press conferences addressing the issue, whereas Gantz has kind of remained silent well, in the face the, of this He's coronavirus. the prime minister right now. I mean, he may be acting, acting, Yeah, but acting, Gantz acting. is, I mean, this is a time, the time in which he needs to shine for the Israeli well, public. Except the, well, except the fact that he's, he can't do anything right now. In other words, it's Prime Minister Netanyahu that can make decisions and implement policies. Gantz, he agrees with the policies. You can't really disagree with anything that's been done by the government. You can argue like I have, they haven't done enough. But you can't really say they, you know, I disagree with this, I disagree right. with that. So I think, you know, there really isn't that much he can do. I mean, listen, crises always favor the incumbent, in the sense, unless they mess it up, obviously. But crisis, at least in terms of TV time and everything else, when there's a crisis, you want to hear from your prime minister. Now, Gantz's efforts to form a government with the support of the Joint Arab List uh, don't seem to be progressing at this point. Do you think that he's going to receive the support of the uh, Balad representatives, the, the most extreme representatives on the Joint Arab Party list? And even if he does, how will he be able to... <laughs> okay, so I think we have to divide this into two parts. To pass parts. legislation, Okay, so here's, okay, so here's yeah. the two parts. I think he will... For, I'm not sure whether he'll form a government with them or ever will be able to. But I think he will get enough votes to be the one recommended to form... Uh, the government initially. He'll have enough votes to replace Edelstein as the Speaker of the Knesset. He'll have enough votes to pass the law that says someone under indictment can't run for prime minister or become prime minister or form a government, some version of that, depending on what it is. So that will either affect this immediate attempt of putting together a government or it would say that if we go to elections again, Netanyahu cannot run to be prime minister again. Now, that he has the votes to do, I believe. So where that's going to end up, who yeah. knows? Well, I mean, the fact that Ali Adeli, who is, who is you know, uh, one of Netanyahu's closest allies in his government, is coming out and saying there needs to be unity gover government right now, you guys need to get over this hump, um, certainly says a lot well, about we the right, situation. Well, what we need so. right now is a unity budget. I mean, qu no, quite honestly, we talk about money and money, but there's no budget right now. The only yeah. budget the country has is one-twelfth of last year's budget. We need at least pass a budget for just for this. So that there's right. a put aside a lot of money for it. All right, Mark, thank you for joining us yet again, and I'm sure we will see you soon. Now, this is exciting. A major Hollywood actress is set to star in a remake of the Israeli thriller drama False Flag that's soon going to be released on Apple TV. And ILTV's Nittany Manson has the details. Nittany. Hey, Natasha. So if you are a big fan of Kill Bill and Pulp Fiction, this is going to be some really exciting news for you. Uma Thurman is going to be the star of Suspicion, an Apple TV remake of the Israeli show False Flag, which was originally called uh, Kfulim, or Doubles on Keshe. Kill Bill is actually one of my top three favorite <laughs> movies, so I'm a so big, good. big, big fan of Uma. So what is this Israeli drama about? So this show basically focuses on the story of five ordinary Israelis who wake up one day to find out that they're under suspicion of being involved in a high-profile kidnapping. Um, the drama involves the Israeli government and the Mossad. So, so what will Uma Thurman's role be in the readaptation of this show? Well, Uma is supposed to be um, a successful American businesswoman in the remake, whose 21-year-old son actually gets kidnapped while he's staying at a hotel in Manhattan. Um, and his abduction actually gets caught on film and goes viral. But this version of the show is going to be for British citizens who are staying at the same hotel that are considered as suspects. Very interesting. Well, yeah. The original show was super successful worldwide, so I'm sure that this will also be a hit, right? Yeah, I mean, it's been acquired by Fox International and broadcast already in 121 countries. So, I mean, it's doing pretty well. It's doing very well. Yeah. Well, I cannot wait to see the remake. Thank you for joining us, Nittany. Same. <laughs> My pleasure. All right, let's take a look at the weather forecast. The weekend is finally here, and today we're looking at a very warm high of 25 degrees Celsius or 77 Fahrenheit, but rain is expected for the majority of the weekend, meaning that even though there should be a high of around 19 degrees Celsius or 66 Fahrenheit on both Friday and Saturday here in Tel Aviv, the beach may be a no-go. The good news is that you may have more time to Netflix binge. If you aren't already doing that, we'll stuck in quarantine. And now before we go, let's take a look at what is going viral in Israel. So Puli may be over, but you've got to enjoy these videos. A bunch of people dressed up as dinosaurs attempting to enter the Israeli bus. I think they're the only, uh, the only people that are allowed, or not people, I guess, things, that are allowed to enter the bus from the front of the bus now that there's quarantine scares and coronavirus scares everywhere. 
All right, that is it for today's news. Today's exchange rate is 3.63 shekels to the American dollar. For more news from IL TV, please like IL TV on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube and Roco TV pages. I'm Natasha Kirchak, and thanks for watching.